Hello, I'm William Zogby. I'm the chair of cardiology here at Houston Methodist. And it's a pleasure to have Dr. Leslie Shaw with us from Well Cornell and previously at Emory. Uh, Leslie, we really enjoyed your grand rounds today. And uh, it was an eye opener, I think for many, just to take a look at how much have we come uh, in imaging and, and understanding and still to understand quite a bit of coronary disease. It really was fascinating. So welcome and, and thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you, Bill. It's a pleasure for me to be here. I've, I've known you, all, you and many of the folks here, many of the faculty here for many, many years and it's truly a pleasure for me to be here. Well, I have a couple of questions for you. One is um, thinking about uh, calcium scoring, which is a also a marker, obviously, of disease. What's the relation of calcium score to the more soft plaques and, <clears throat> and issues that uh, burden the other va the vasculature of the coronaries? Meaning, does uh, a higher calcium score mean or relate to uh, higher risk soft plaques? Intuitively, yes, but I'm really not sure. <laughs> you know, it's usually the, the relationship, I think we're still evolving in our knowledge, that's one, of calcified plaque alone in its relationship to other plaques. And certainly, as, as, as you can imagine, it's highly dependent on treatment, ongoing treatment that the patient has, particularly statin therapies. So it, it, it can be that it is the tip of the iceberg, what you see uh, you know, ab above the waterline, <coughs> if you will, and that the patient has a, a tremendous burden of non-calcified plaque. And the higher that calcium score increases, that the greater the likelihood that they have a burden of non-calcified plaque. I would and, think so, Yeah, right? it makes sense, right? So in, in, I don't know if I missed it today, but in the studies that have quantitated the softer or <clears throat> the higher risk plaques, what is the additive value, be it you know, AUC or whichever measure of prediction of events on top of calcium score? Well, you know, there's, <coughs> it's, it's, that is, that's the question of the hour, right? <laughs> that's um, true. It is the question of the hour because it, it depends on, um, the, the studies are quite mixed. And the Scott Hart that was just published um, within the last couple of months at, on J in Jack said that the calcium score was the most predictive above and beyond adverse plaque uh, characteristics such as non-calcified plaque volume. Um, and that just kind of threw all of us for a loop. But it is so conceivably then um, the relation is there. The Meaning relationship the is strong. <coughs> strong. The relationship is there. One of the challenges with the Scott Heart is it was qualitative plaque. It wasn't really quantifi quantification of plaque. So I think there, um, in, in, this, in the calcium score, gives you the full burden across all the epicardial vessels of the amount of plaque. And I think whenever you encumber all that's going on in the major epicardial vessels, you're going to have a strong predictor of risk. That makes sense. Uh, and I think that's where calcium scoring is so strong in terms of risk prediction. The other thing you mentioned, I don't know if it was a thought, um, futuristic thought about calcium scoring is not necessarily the number per se, but its distribution, right? And uh, localization and volume, et cetera, et cetera. Where are we there? Are we still as a thought or is there some stronger data to tell us look further into beyond the number? It's, it's evolving. I think there's, there's a, a few small papers. There was a paper out of the Framingham study. We've had a paper in European Heart looking beyond just the calcium score itself. Um, there, there was a paper from the MESA study looking at the density of plaque. You know, as, um, as a plaque ages, it becomes more dense, so it gets whiter on a CT scan. So there's, there's just not a, a huge not evidence yet. base there, but it makes sense, right? If it's more eccentric, um, if the shape is, is odd, uh, that there's likely non-calcified right. plaque volume there. Um, proximal. And it's um, evenly distributed and exactly, different. Exactly, more than we diffuse. Know. Exactly. Uh, how difficult, and you mentioned it's tedious to do all these volume quantitations and characteristics. Uh, how closer are we? To some automation. We're a couple of years away. <coughs> we really need the artificial intelligence to help us with quantification of plaque. These are half millimeter slices. 
uh, a lot of manual segmentation of the plaque, or at least manual uh, uh, adapting the computer uh, algorithms for that. I think within the next couple of years, uh, the programs will get better at automatic segmentation. Uh, the ones, the current programs that we have now are imperfect. They still require a lot of physician oversight and input. And what, of course, we want for the physician is to have the artificial intelligence guide the physician, but ultimately it's always going to be the physician who makes that final interpretation. We're a couple of years away, though. A um, couple of other thoughts. One, we've seen in practice and probably in some publications quite a bit of difference of risk stratification between the traditional cholesterol, take away diabetics, and, the, and what you see actually on calcium scoring, particularly in this borderline range. I know the guidelines have not come out straight and told us that you need to do a calcium scoring in those situations. Um, I feel strongly about it. How, I mean, what's the data and how do you feel about it? Well, you know, a lot of that data on uh, cholesterol <coughs> harkens back to the early Framingham study, Bill Cannell, showing that if you take a, a distribution of cholesterol values, that e at half the patients with high cholesterol will, you know, half the patients with coronary disease will have high cholesterol and half won't. So you're fooled a lot, a lot a of lot. times. You can have people with, with, you know, dyslipidemia that have a zero calcium score and vice versa. So I think in particular because it's not a costly modality, it's an easy modality. We like things yes. in medicine that are easy to measure, that are inexpensive, and I think they can have far-reaching implications for care of patients, particularly the detection of atherosclerosis. Do you think the guidelines will be more forceful in the, into this area, particularly that the radiation is not that much, and also coupled, to me, coupled with the lack of need or no need if it is positive really to repeat it because you know where your risk is and you're going to do something about it. So radiation is not a big issue. Cost is really not a big issue uh, you know, for, for this kind of methodology. And I do hope, I don't know if, I know you work on the coronary disease guideline. I don't know if it is you know, in that purview, but I do hope that we could see something with all the data that we're seeing nowadays. One of the nice things about calcium scoring, and you know as a physician, it's hard to motivate some patients. Yes. And when they see, you show them that scan, you have atherosclerosis. That's There's true. a lot of data that that's really powerfully motivating uh, for a patient. You can't, you can, you can close your eyes and you can pretend it to go away, but when you actually That's see a, that you have It disease, changes behavior it changes and it changes behavior. also management. I changes mean, there's no behavior. question about no it. No question. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, evidence to show that. And, and I know most, most physicians who are doing calcium scoring take that moment to show the patient their scans, and I think that's important. We certainly have come a long way We've come from tremendous. percent stenosis to looking beyond Amazing. <laughs> and even criticizing the percent stenosis. So, I mean, uh, that was very enlightening. A pleasure having you. Thank you, Bill. And uh, really, it was a great pleasure to, to listening to you. And uh, I certainly invite you, if you haven't, to take a look uh, at her grand rounds. It really is amazing. And follow us on uh, YouTube. Thank you.